Today is January 29th. We've got Boone on the show to talk about the offseason and spring training and the upcoming season, and we're live! You heard our song? I like it. Just take me out the ballgame with that different lyrics. Recaps galore, weekly awards, stat lines, steaming hot takes. Shout out Dan Zlotnick. All right, hello and welcome. Thank you guys very much for joining us. I need to learn that song. Yeah. I'm going to wake up singing that thing. Can do that. Right. Just send the video of that one. Yeah. yeah, appreciate it. All right. All right, thank you very much for joining us, Boone. Thank everyone for coming out. This is great. Yeah, this is cool. Jake, how are you? I'm good. Jim, Aaron, David, everyone here. Uh, God, it's so cool to be back doing this um, with our friend Aaron. Um, and like just seeing a lot of people here that we've done other events with and stuff like thank you guys so much um, You're the lifeblood of what we've been able to do to actually make this like a company and everything like that So thank you guys uh, And now we're just gonna roast Boone for 58 minutes Let's go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wanted to we wanted to open up with uh, a trivia for you. Okay. Do you know what the most popular clip from your appearance on Talking Yanks was last year? No. No? Me yelling at you? No, no, no. no. Good uh, guess. Good guess. Good guess. Mike, can you switch that to is the... Up there, but let's see. For those audio only. What, what month are we Counts, especially here? like recently, but that seems to be more is that not attacking pitches in his own. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, th that's ultimately what, you know, a lot of times the separator between good and great offenses, average and good offenses. So you hadn't seen that? No. no. And then we saw a video of you that's on... That's crisscross uh, applesauce, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure is. Yeah. Sure is. Is that the, the normal position? Because you no, were on... Okay. No. Oh, you know what it was? So that's in my office at home, at my house. I'm like, why am I not sitting at my desk? I must have been, my iPad must have been out of juice, so I was, I was plugged in. Wow. Was plugged in. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So, there we go. That's just okay. sitting in the corner of the room on, on the carpet getting uh, asked questions about your managerial decisions <laughs> from two schlubs. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yep. That was some, that's some people's here favorite reaction of me because it looks like I've seen a ghost. <laughs> Because there's, there's about a thousand jokes that run through my head, and yeah. then I'm just still trying to take in what you're saying. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad. Is that norm? No. Just charging? Just charging. Just charging. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's fair. fine. Fair. We all have you that spot what? in our house where we keep the charger that we wish it was just a little more convenient. Yes. But you're leaning over the couch doing that. I get it. Yeah, exactly. How was the off season? Good question. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. You know, uh, I went to Uruguay on a family vacation, okay. which was, you know, uh, we, we, my, the six of us, so my, my wife and kids and I went with another family, and, um, and the, the dad of the other family proposed in, like, the summer. He's like, I think we're going to go to Uruguay. And I went, man, Uruguay, Christmas and New Year, you, you better be right about this, Joe. <laughs> and he was. It was great. We had a great time, uh, but it's been good. Um, Two, two in college now, and, uh, you know, watching football, watching my son's high school football and daughters in soccer. So busy with that and obviously uh, trying to round out our team. When's, yeah. When's the flight down to Tampa? I think I'm leaving the 7th. Okay. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, in pencil right now. Okay. Yeah. The big move, the Soto move, Yeah. start there. When do you know it's, you know, something that is likely going to happen? Do you leave – you know, when you break for the season and you're doing off-season plans? Oh, no. No, not at that point. It's something that actually kind of came together. So we were at the winter meetings, and that's when it really got brewing hot and heavy. And, um, you know, it was it was definitely um, in the hopper and looked like it was potentially going to happen. But it was actually all the days at, at the winter meetings where, you know, we were trying different iterations, you know, 
in a lot of ways probably trying to keep Michael King out of the deal. So that's why it, it probably took a few days. And then at the end, you know, obviously we gave up a, a really good package. I think the Padres did really well in the deal. But at the end of the day, you're like, man, this is Juan Soto. We have a chance to get. So, um, so excited to have him. You know, I think everyone here that's, you know, follows us closely, uh, you know, and follows the game of baseball knows, like, the the to dream on, you know, what he, he and Aaron can be as a tandem. And then the supporting cast around those guys, you know, offense, which, which we struggled to be consistent at all season long last year. Um, I'm really excited about the potential of our offense and, and now a little more of the versatility and the depth of the offense too, that hopefully we're in a better position to withstand, you know, the inevitable uh, injury that pops up or whatever it may be. Hopefully we're in a better spot to absorb that offensively this year. Cause I, I think we're going to really bang. How many times have you written down different iterations of a lineup? A lot. Okay. I, you know, I, I do that a lot um, this time of year. It's, uh, Do you draw the field and put them in their positions, or are you just you know straight names in the lineup? Like, um, are you doing defensive arrangements as well? Is it doodle? artsy or is it work? Um, you know what? A little of both. Like okay. when I w that's funny. Have okay. I shared that with you or something? Like no, when we're I, just all baseball fans. But like we all did that in high school. I'll pull you know? out my little. I have a ton of little lineup cards, and I'll write on the back, and I'll just do a little diamond where I put them around, and then I do the lineup alongside yeah. it. a lot of times that's how I do and hand to Mendy in the past or whatever. Um, so that is a way I do it. Something yeah. Jake dreams about a lot and you need to confirm oh. if this is true or not. Does, does Cashman in the front office have a giant whiteboard with the depth charts of all the positions? Cause in Jake's head it exists and you might crush him right now. It's okay. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. It is a giant whiteboard where every, <laughs> a cheer. it makes sense. Yes. Every org, every, uh, every affiliate, you know, right. has all the guys and, Yes, okay. to some degree, yes. When you're writing these lineups, is Soto in it every time? Because <laughs> he, something that I've heard people mention out there, you know, I wouldn't bring this to you. Right. Uh, Juan Soto played every game last year. I know, he actually didn't start a game against us in, in Yankee Stadium. I don't know what it was. He came in and pinch hit. I don't know what was going on there. What is that about? Oh, okay. I liked when he was. I liked when he wasn't in the lineup that day. Maybe they're giving right. him an extra tour. Of the I hope so. I mean, you yeah, know, he's he's definitely uh, you know a guy that can do that. Because technically, he's on a one-year contract. Yeah, he's a guy that's had a lot of good durability. Young. We've talked about that with Volpe when you were what, playing. What's the one year got to do with it? Well, uh, if you had to be worried about him over a twelve-year contract, you could say something like, "Oh, well, you know." Well, we're, that's kind of we, that's kind of. Yeah. Hey, if you're on my either. side on that, I'm all in. Uh, Let's just play him every day. Let's yeah. just uh, the guy that could only be here a year just run use him, him into and the abuse him. That's what yeah. Jake's telling you. To <laughs> that's what, they, that's what they worked for the Padres. I don't uh, know. Not, not really. Look, I, I, I think uh, I think hopefully he's in there. He's in there every day. Is that something you'd offer him though? Because I know what you value rest days, especially like getting judged two off his feet, doubling up on a, an off day with rest. Mm -hmm. We've seen that be implemented while you've been here. Is so a guy that likes to play 162? Is that a conversation? You have? Hey, do you do you want me to, or or would you kind no, of push no, him? No, but a, a lot of times though, you know, there's very few like you know off days I give to. Now, now, certain guys that are going through certain things and at a certain age, I'm going to give them built-in, you know, a rest day here and there. But, like, younger guys and, like, even Aaron, when Aaron's 100%, like, I'm not resting him. You know, he's usually – he's just really good at playing through some things. And, and a lot of times when I give him a day, you know, it's, it's me saying let's be wise on the long term because I don't want him to really blow something that I know he's maybe – maybe nursing or something. When uh, when you look at the lineup, mm -hmm. Judge just said, yep. he said as long as, uh, I think he called you out by name, as long, long as Aaron keeps it DJ Soto me, yeah. I'll be happy. Could have been another Aaron. So how many times is that? No, I, I asked the question. Oh, I said, okay. Yeah. I was, it was at his thing. I said, well, hey, where do you want to hit this year? Okay, do you like that? I mean, Judge 3, we don't see that a lot. We I do. Um, but we'll see. Again, it's it's about lock. To me, it's about locking down the leadoff spot, and like I want that spot to be a an, a, a spot in the lineup that we can hang our hat on, whatever three fifty or higher 
on base percentage. And that's DJ when he's been right and at his best and, and in the second half of the season. Um, if that's a if that's a combination of things, but I want that to be a spot where there's a lot of guys on base for and then <clears throat> so depending on who that is, let's say it's DJ, then the natural thing would be, you know, Soto Judge. If it ha- what if it's Verdugo though? Yeah. You know, then it then it might be a Verdugo Judge Soto type okay. thing. So I do envision uh Aaron and, and and Juan hitting next to one another. There's a story out there that um I think it was reported by Rosenthal, so it's not like a gossipy story. That Soto was in the two hole with the Padres <clears throat> and requested to go to the three. Mm-hmm. Guy that has that good of an eye and on base, I'm guessing he likes seeing as many pitches as he can yeah. before getting up there. I know he's always liked hitting third. You know, we've we've kind of broached that a little bit and, and he's good. He's good either way. Okay. So we'll we'll kind of work through that. That's kind of what spring training's for a little bit too. And you know, hopefully we go in healthy and we're we're in a good spot to where again, as as excited as I am to see what Aaron and Juan are gonna do, I'm I'm really excited about what potentially is the length and depth of the lineup for for yeah. leadoff? Do you think of it more as hot hand? Do you think of it more as lefty righty? Do you like because you know you if we went around this room right now, you'd have people with Verdugo, you'd have people with DJ, you'd have people with Glaber. Yep, some Anyone people with Volpe. Some Volpe, people with Volpe. Volpe could grow into that role too. I mean, he's a natural one that if he continues to you know go where we think he's going to go, I, I don't see that certainly at the start of the year. Um, but you just shut you yeah, guys down. I, I the, think the, the way five you, of you that were Volpe leadoff just got shut down. No, I mean he <laughs> he may take it and I'm run with, with it at I'm some point. You. Like yeah, right. I'm not, you know, rel- but I think the way you put it is like it, it could be any of those things. The the bottom line is that spot in the order has to be productive. So hopefully in a perfect world, that's one guy, you know, like DJ just takes it and runs with it. Right. But uh, you know, if it's if it's the hot hand in that spot, if it's a right left thing, so be it. Okay. When you look at uh, Grisham and Verdugo, yep. Some people are looking at their their splits, both lefties, but Grisham's got reverse splits, and Verdugo's got very natural crushes, righties. Right. Uh, is that like do you guys believe in reverse splits, a, a platoon with those guys, or is that not how you're viewing them at all? No, because I think I, I, you know I think some of that is just a couple years going a certain way. Um, I think Alex is going to play all the time. Um, you know, I think Trent's going to play a ton. Trent's going to end up playing a ton. You know, to be to have a have another elite center fielder on the field with, you know, even though he's had some struggles, you know, the last couple of years with from a batting average standpoint, he still does get on base. He's got some power. He's done some things in the postseason. He's a really good player. And – you know, we start making plans, and 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 that's with you know everyone healthy and everything's perfect. He's going to play, and then one thing happens, and ne- next thing you know, I can't get him out of the lineup. So we make all these plans, and, and he's lead. It'll off. work itself out to where <laughs> he'll be in there. Trent. Well, in hey. your dream world, he's playing that well. Might, Might as well. Can't Lefty good. with a good on on base. Mm-hmm. Verdugo yeah. kind of gets overlooked totally a, a little bit just because I don't when. You know, we do instant reactions. We kind of learned that from your guy, Joe's McFly, a little yeah. bit. People like the reaction. Let's go! <laughs> you, you left was, out a key I word. Star I know, I did. <laughs> and that's fine. Um, but, you know, when it first happened, when we're crunching the math on it with, you know, Dominguez supposedly back at some point this year, and you're starting to do and you're like, well, maybe, is Verdugo going to be, like, part of a Soto deal? Like, we're just brainstorming on the fly. Verdugo is a piece that a lot of Yankee fans have been asking for for the past couple of years, more of a contact, lefty, pretty solid defense last yeah. year. The numbers graded him out well. <laughs> that I, I don't know, was that more of a surprise when that happened? Because Red Sox-Yankees, are, you know, normally dogs and cats a you little know, bit. You know, honestly, he's he's been on our board the last couple of years. We, we've had, you know, I know Cash has had small talks at different times, you know, about Verdugo. So it's kind of been, in a lot of ways, a long time coming. Um, we, we've tried to make a move for him in past years. Um, yeah, wasn't so, there Clark? Yeah. There was Clark for the Dugo de- rumors, one the, deadline. They said they talked about that, but that yeah, could mean anything. I don't, I don't the know. Yankees the, Yankees didn't, the Yankees didn't like well, that. Well, speaking of Joe's, he wanted, he wanted, Mike, can you show my screen? Joe's wanted to know if you could help him with his swing at all. <laughs> <laughs> can you coach that? Wow. Is that is that uh, 
I mean, I know there's a little bit of uh, showmanship you know, showmanship going on, but <laughs> what's the real thing look like? Oh, I'll show wow. you. Here we, we, speak, speak the real thing? Yeah, speaking of, this is against me. Okay. Um, Where is this? This is our warehouse. You should, you should like come AI? on. Like AI? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's that, a that, ball, that ball's juiced. <laughs> that ball is juiced. That ball's juiced. All right. That's the no. 2019 ball. I appreciate yeah. that. Juice I, for clicks. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, well, maybe, well, maybe I'll make it to the warehouse at some point. Okay. You'd like it. <clears throat> Coney yeah. came. Like yeah. It. Taught me how to pitch. Yeah. We have the same size hands. Really? Yeah. I said, I don't know if I can throw a splitter. My hands are small. And he said, and we went like this. I still can't sp- throw one. He's better. <laughs> <laughs> What's that guy's deal? <laughs> Tony's better. Yeah. Yeah. better yeah. pitcher. Yeah. 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 Okay. What um for the lefties? Which so Verdugo. We, right. I, I nice. I'm I'm very excited about Alex. I think he's, um, I think he's a really talented player. I think he's a really talented hitter. That's only scratched the surface of what I think he can be. Um, and I mean, could you imagine him? You know. Uh, you know, when healthy, like in the lineups deep, like somewhere in the middle, potentially right. somewhere up, to, like cleaning up a lot of things. Like he's, he's. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can we can get him to another level too. Do you uh, worry is not the right word because we're talking Juan Soto and Verdugo, two yeah. really established major league hitters in yeah. different ways. Soto's on a Hall of Fame path. Verdugo's like could be an All Star any season. Coming to Yankee Stadium when Rizzo first came over. It felt like he got a little short porch happy. Like it, I, there was a while where he was just early on everything, and he was kept hitting foul ball, foul ball, foul, foul ball, ball huh? foul, foul ball. Yeah, yeah, but do you work, like do that, you worry Anthony, about that for a hitter at all? Not really. Anthony's unique in that way. He he still hits. He hits a ton of foul balls. Right. He has his whole career. That's just how he is. He's on top of the plate, you know, and he's, you know, he's kind of has a unique unique way of doing it. And I don't, so I don't think that was necessarily a Yankee Stadium thing. And actually, I think when he got to us, he, he went off right away, didn't he? He had, like, that one series against <laughs> Miami that right. he, like, won the series. Yeah, that was his team. very first and series. And it was like, okay, first. yeah, we'll take this guy. Yeah. Yeah, no, he did get – he hit a lot of homers. But I, he said, I think, in spring training that yeah. it was – he was like, it's so damn close. Yeah. Like, it's right there when you're – up at bat. Yeah, and you know, at the end of the day, I don't hate lefties that are capable of it, like having it in their mind a little sure. bit, you know. And I think it'll serve Verdugo well. Like, you know, Verdugo, who's hit what's he at ten, fifteen homers a year, kind of. You know, I think I think you could see that number go up uh, for him. One uh, last question on the <clears throat> lineup, unless Jake's got more, then we'll keep going. Okay, naturally. Okay. You have a lot of big names and a lot of depth on the lineup. Yeah. What is there conversations that need to happen if a guy all of a sudden is hitting lower than he's ever hit in his life? If that you know, I mean, do you get try to get ahead of those? Like um, um, in some versions of the lineup you're drawing, right. are DJ and Stanton lower than usually they've ever been? If people are hot, you got a lot of good guys. Yeah, or, or mean, anyone. You know, I, I, I mean, I have conversations with these guys all the time with things I'm thinking, or, or if something's going to be a little bit different. So we'll just see. I mean, again, we're, you know, we're late January. So those conversations and everyone's having don't need to be had. Life like, right now. like exactly right now. It's <clears throat> like, we're going, we start in a few weeks here to get these guys ready for March 28th. And it's like, that's what we're focused on. And then as, as we get closer, we'll start to dial in, the lineup and what it looks like, and if conversations have to happen, so be it. Seems like everyone's getting to camp pretty early this year. If we, uh, I was telling Jake, <coughs> Jack Curry's book about the 98 Yankees talked uh, talked about how pissed they were that offseason, how upset, or how much they wanted to just play right away again. Yeah. And I'd like to think in my happy spring training brain that that's why we're getting guys showing up like a month and a half early, just kind of yeah. really want to um, change. I, I think that's part of it. Definitely, but I also think it's something that's also shifting within our organization too a little bit. And you know, Aaron, who lives down there um, in the winter, you know, and, and kind of fostering that culture of hey, let's let's get into the complex together and work out together. So um, there's been you know really all winter, half a dozen guys there on the major league team, kind of all the time. And now you know, I actually just got off the phone as I was driving in with with 
Desi Drush, our, our assistant uh, pitching coach, and kind of giving me the rundown. And I talked to James Rousen right before I walked in, and it's like all the guys that are – I mean, there's, you know, 15, 20, 25. I might be light on that number of guys that are, you know, regularly showing up to the complex that are going to be in big league spring training. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, allows us to, you know, keep eyes on them and, and feel like, you know, we have the facility to, to really – cater to them and get them everything we need. We have our, a lot of our pitching guys down there. James Rousen lives down there. Um, some of our strength and conditioning and trainers are down there. So it's like um, it, 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 it's a good setup for guys, and, and, and Judgy goes a long way in kind of, uh, you know, pushing and supporting that. Yeah. So hey, then, yeah go ahead. There's <clears throat> one other pretty big offseason ad that we haven't talked about, and then we, we can dive into some other things. Yeah. Marcus Strome. Yeah, he was there. He was actually at the complex today for the first time through a bullpen today. And uh, so. Look at that. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we're getting everyone involved down there. It's kind of like, like I want to go down there yesterday. Let's go. And, you know, so, you know, I got to, I got to, you know, be at home a little bit. And, sure. Uh, can you, can you poke cash at all? Because the way that came together was pretty funny because it was Strowman's interested in the Yankees. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, well, yeah. Well, the Yankees are kind of interested in Strowman, and then it was like forty-eight hour dating. Like this is happening, <laughs> this is happening. Like again, we 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 love the process, so yeah. I don't know. Want a little bit on your end of the process, and like, do you send cash? Like, lol. <laughs> no. So, so actually, um, <laughs> I was I was flying down to Tampa to have um, a meeting with the entire coaching staff and support staff, just so we could all get on the same page and just one of those three-day little meetings we're having down in Tampa, you know, especially with some of the new staff members, just to make sure we kind of are buttoned up and hit the ground running uh, when we get down to spring training. So I was going down there for that. And it was actually Monday. I went to the complex. They were starting to talk. Marcus lives in Tampa. I'm like, can I go meet with him? And, you know, we set it up. I went over to Marcus's house and um, had, a, had a really, really enjoyed my time talking to him and and hanging with him and um uh and then it actually happened while we were down there in those few days so i, I i'm excited about it um you know his his consistency throughout his career um he takes great care of himself i think he's healthy after you know having a couple little hiccups in the second half last year with the hip and with the rib cage everything's good this is a guy that takes like i think is going to have for us now, I think he's going to be really good, but I think this is a guy that's going to have longevity, just the way he cares for his body and his athleticism and, and stuff. But this is a guy that's been a really consistent performer that, um, you know, you, you get the sense, and this is what I got the sense in talking to him right away, was this is where he wanted to be. And this – and, you know, some guys say that. Um, some guys are excited to do experience it. This, you sense, like, this is where I want to be. And uh, hopefully, you know, all those things add up and, and he becomes, you know, a valuable uh, part of our rotation. Yeah. Staying on starting pitching but not the Yankees. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction when Otani numbers came out and then, and then structure <laughs> and then, came out? And then the structure came out. Um, well, I, th I, I think with the number, I think right away they said it's structured a certain way, so I was kind of curious to see how that was going to happen. Um, wow. I, I mean, it's, that's, that's a lot of iron, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah. How about Yamamoto? The way we were reading <coughs> into kind of like, you know, the way you and Cash were talking about it, it seemed like you were a little uh, confident or at least thought it was – pretty much in the cards. Did you think it was until it wasn't? Um, I felt like I, I felt like it was us and maybe probably L.A. Um, obviously L.A. <laughs> I mean, it ended up being them. So I never felt like, oh, this is he, – he's coming here no matter what. I didn't feel that way at all. But um, I definitely felt good about – you know, we, we flew out to L.A. and met with him in, in California – and then we met with him again uh, in New York in the city um, a second time a couple weeks later. And, you know, know they went well and really liked the 
the person and the and the kid and, and think he's going to be really successful. Um, but I don't even that lat when he left New York. You know, I, I think Cash even said to me at one point, "What do you th- what do you think?" I'm like, "I don't know. I think I think we got a real chance, but I don't know. You, you never know." And um, <clears throat> you know, I th- I think a lot that w- end up going into it probably was he had spent he was. He, he basically was living in L.A. Yeah. Like for the month yeah. th- through it all. And um, I think Otani had a real effect on him that we didn't necessarily expect. So. Um, and all that money. Yeah. And, and that he's he's. Uh, <laughs> look, I, th- I think he's going to be really good. I, I think he's going to come over here and be successful. Uh, what he turns into, we'll see. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we can we can see him at some point and and. Uh, and and get after him a little bit. I think we might see him in June. I think the yeah. Dodgers come out then. Yeah, June 8th. Yeah. Okay. He might pitch. Yeah. Well, we have a big announcement, and we're announcing it with Mizzen in Maine. There's a reason me and John Boy look so good oh, yeah. today, uh, and that's Mizzen in Maine, uh, to be honest. No one should show up to work wearing a stiff, wrinkled, and uncomfortable dress shirt. Mizzen in Maine invented the performance fabric dress shirt and designed it to perform any day, anywhere. Lightweight, breathable, moisture wicking. Not sure what that means, but I think it's nice. (laughs) What's that mean? It doesn't get wet. Awesome. Wicks moisture. Feel the difference for yourself and get 20% off with code JOHNBOY20 at MizzenInMaine.com. That's code JOHNBOY20, 20% off. Link in the description. And uh, thank you, Mizzenmaine, because they helped put this on. So appreciate it. Moisture wicking shirts changed my life. Cotton? Yeah, Yeah, cotton. I'm just sweating, and it's wet all the time. Which brings us to fabric. Yeah. (laughs) What are your favorites? How do you? Th- what do you like about the n- the new uniforms? No, no stroke on the lettering. You fan? Huh? Oh yes. You are. Oh, it's yeah. like the old Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle it's, uniforms. It's the ones we wore at Field of Dreams. Oh. Yeah, I, th- I think they're. Uh, I think they're super. Those balls super were juiced. Dope. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> but those balls are crushed too. So. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, I, I think I think the new the new road unis are. We say new. Will we see old, you in in old. them then? You know. Yeah, from every now and then. Sounds like a no. <laughs> that sounded no. like a no. <laughs> I, I wore it for Field of Dreams. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, the the Mizzen and Main announcement I want to make. Yeah, are we gonna do a question or no? Well, I was about talking Yanks. Oh. Did you ask him if we can announce it? Yeah. Oh. He I said, watched yeah. him ask. Wow. Are there if there's talking Yanks fans here? Aaron Boone's gonna be back this season doing talking yeah. Yanks with us. Bantering with Boom. Bantering with Boom. We think it'd be an awesome juxtaposition if there's like last year and then this year we win the World Series. Amen, yeah. brother. So. Oh. <laughs> yes. It's nonstop trivia because there's just nothing but good stuff going on. That'll uh, be the show. Uh, you know what? Yeah. I'm, I'm in. Right. I'm in. We'll come up with questions now and we'll keep score okay. throughout the season. How's, wow. your, how's your immaculate grid score? If going? you get it correct, well, maybe we'll do a giveaway. Uh, I'm it's not slowed good. down. Remember when we did Immaculate Grid together and I tried to get the most likely answer Man. instead of the least common? It's a more fun way to play. <laughs> I think there's. I, I think that's what's kind of cool about it. You play a lot of different ways. Are you still playing? Like play the fa- I play every morning. Oh, wow. Yeah. How are you doing? I, I mean, I love it. It's like my crossword What would you get today? I got really low today. <laughs> nice. That's I a good thing. Today was a low day. Well, if, if you're going for, for what did Ma- What did Max Manis get? Max? <laughs> 20 range. 20 range from Checking Max. Checking the phone. Efforting. Okay. Um, Auditing. I, I got really low today, which I usually don't, honestly. It's good. Um, it's, that's fun. All right. We're not looking at his phone. Now, do you text it to someone if you get it low? Like, who's your guy that you um, – you just hold it in to yourself? You oh, have to share I got it. I four today. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> Did you grow up in a baseball family or Oops. something? Yeah, you know who texts me a lot about is Sweeney Murdy. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He'll text me his his grid every now and then. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah, Sweeney's great. One, we have a couple more Yankee questions. Go ahead. Yeah. Might surprise you. Um, I want to ask about Anthony Volpe. Okay. Oh. Short stop. Um, we start doing before every season. We do player profile and projections, where we do Ooh. about ten, fifteen minutes on each player, kind of high do it end, in. low end. It's okay. a good time. Yeah. Like, um, like what? Like, okay. how specific do you get with projections? Like, well, <laughs> are you throwing out, like, their 
OPS, what their well, we usually homers, ribbies. I was going to make a joke, but I'll answer honestly. We yeah. usually decide what stat we value the most from a guy, okay. or, or we think we we will value the most from a guy. Okay, like um, you know, uh, with Rodon recently, I said innings pitched because if he's throwing a lot of innings, like it means he's starting there. a lot, and the results are probably good. I like where your heads um, at. I think with Rizzo, I like I before the season, I said it's games played because there's not a lot of depth, and then we didn't have a lot of lefties last year, so. It's always different. Okay. I think the question that Jake's going to pose like to you yeah, is, is you, what should Volpe's be? Because we, we, we kind of stumbled into this a little bit. And it's, you know, games played in innings pitch gets a little interesting and tricky because, you know, if Volpe plays another 162, that means he's probably performing with this team. And, right. But I, so I guess outside of that, like. Uh, well, I'm going to spare you the numbers. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Okay. Um, my expectation is that he is going to be. Hopefully, every bit he was defensively last year, and and I th- I think he's positioned to make real improvements offensively and being more consistent. You know, um, he is he's a he's obviously a great kid and tremendous makeup. But I think and and, and I'll even go back to last year. One of the reasons that we broke camp with him as our starter. One, he did really well in spring training, which we, you know, we kind of posed it as a as a competition. Mm-hmm. You know, we we put that out there, so we wanted to honor that. But, <clears throat> it, but having not played, you know, barely any AAA even, and being such a young player, you know, it's like the reason we brought him to be the shortstop for the New York Yankees, and we're committed to that, is we we're betting on the makeup and. For that reason and his talent, I believe he'll make real strides this year um, offensively as well. Um, obviously, he did a lot of really good things, over 20 homers, over 20 bags. Um, you know, But obviously, there were some ups and downs too. And um, really like where he's at in working on some of the necessary adjustments that allow him to keep going to another level as a player. Like, I think that's in his DNA and that's who he is. And we're going to look up in several years and see this front line, you know, two way shortstop for the Yankees. And, um, uh, I just believe in the kid a lot. A deep dive one I did on Bopi recently was talked about his, uh, ground ball fly ball rate. Mm -hmm. Like that was a number that I looked at and I don't know, maybe his skill set's way different than, I'm projecting it or wanting it to be. Yeah. But I was like, I'd like it to be more towards what DJ was doing in 2019, 2021, and just getting it through and not not worrying about fly balls. He's got the speed. I want him on base. And he's got a nice line drive swing. <laughs> yeah. I, my, I, look, I, I forget. I, I don't think. It's true in the weeds. I don't think we want to encourage guys to be hitting the ball on the ground. <clears> but <throat> I think what we want to be encouraging is one of the things the big leagues does so well is – you know, they find and exploit holes or and, – and, and part of being a big leaguer and being a big league hitter is, is, you know, covering those things up and plugging those things up and and continuing to build on strengths but also to, you know, cover up some, some holes and wear less, you know. Th- that's a key and a huge part of being a big leaguer is making those adjustments. I'm confident he'll make those adjustments and we'll see another level of offensive performance this year. All right. I like that. Yeah. We'll save it, put it in our episode. So, okay. n- so yeah. no number. No uh, number. On base. Okay. No okay. number. All right. Get on base. And if he's on base a lot, we're in business. Okay. There it is. Yeah. Let's okay. switch to the pitching. Okay. The depth, uh, there's a lot traded away. Yeah. A lot got taken in the Rule 5 draft. Uh, you got Luke Weaver, but he has to be in the tw- on the 26-man roster. Sorry. <clears throat> it, will he be stretched out? Is he the sixth starter potential? Yeah, I, th- I think we'll go in and definitely stretch him out, and then we'll, again, see where we are. You know, we, you know, and uh, So on that whiteboard with the depth chart, like who's in that six, seven, <laughs> eight spot? The, I, I do think we've quietly kind of replenished some of that because that, that really took a hit for us, right, that kind of five, six through ten um, with, with the trade, and we really like, you know, Drew Thorpe, who was in the deal as well. Um, you know, but but we, we added Cody Petit, bringing Luke Weaver back. We're really excited about Will Warren and and Beater and Luis Heels back this year. And we got a little taste of Yogo last year. Um, so, you know, Chase Hampton's not far behind. Who's Yogo? Who, 
Yo Andres Gomez. <laughs> I'm upset I didn't know that. That's an awesome name. I mean, so so I do feel like, you know, that kind of <laughs> 6 through 12, we've replenished and okay. are, are in a good, you know, good spot. And there's some other guys I'm not even naming, like guys we've brought in that we're, you know, quietly excited about that can be part of that depth that you're inevitably going to have to lean on. Um so we'll see who emerges and who does become that six guy. We'll okay. see. We'll see. Yeah. It happens earlier than you want it to usually. I yeah. mean. Yeah. Well. What about uh, Wellesy and Trevi? Are, mm-hmm. we, are we just going in? I mean, in a way, it's probably similar to the game plan of Yankees past years. You guys kind of, you know, you put it on the table. A guy gets banged up. They're going to play eight out of ten games that week. Someone doesn't. It kind of flips. Is it? 50-50, is it platoon split, or like how, how are you guys viewing the catcher position? We'll see. I, I, I'm not viewing it. Um, I think both those guys play a lot. That was kind of meta. Huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm not viewing it? Oh. <laughs> You're viewing it. Um, you know, and Ben Rorvet is, you know, certainly in that mix too. So I think Austin Wells showed us last year that, um, you know, have, me having not seen him really play a lot of catcher up close and personal – um, you know, because last spring, you remember, he hurt his oblique almost right away. So he didn't play in any spring games, and his season got delayed a little bit. Um, you know, and there's always been those question marks around his defense. I, I, I definitely think he's going to be a really good hitter in the big leagues. I think that's real. But what we saw from him in that last month from a catching standpoint was, frankly, a lot better than I expected. And um, the, one of the things that I love about Austin Wells and and – and Trevi has this in spades, and guys like Volpe and Aaron Judge, like they love the game and the and the and the behind the scenes stuff. That if you're going to be really great at this, and you're going to you know move the needle on the margins, like he really likes the you know he nerds out on the game plan and developing that relationship with a starting pitcher. He's got a presence to him. Like he walked into our room as a young rookie and had had the respect and commanded the respect of 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 the rotation you know Garrett really respects him and respects his kind of baseball knowledge and grit and like those little things that Trevi's so good at I feel like Austin has too and then and and I really think there's a lot of upside with his bat from the left side too so I'm excited about him we'll see again we'll see how it plays out I mean um you know it could be kind of a platoon thing where it, but you know you it's also, we'll see what people earn, too. If Cole comes in to your office and says, I need Rortvet, do you go to Rortvet and say, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting bullied every six days. <laughs> no, you know, as <laughs> Benny, Benny forged a really good relationship with Garrett and totally held his own with Garrett. And, uh, and that was good to see. Because Trevi, I think, was such a just – you know, such a became such a comfort level, and Garrett rightfully has so much respect for him. So when he went down, and Garrett's in the middle of that season, like Ben stepping into that role and really th- thriving in it. You know, he really did, um, and and certainly earned the respect of Garrett and and help help you know help him get to that Cy Young finish line. Um, Benny did a great job in that regard. I've changed my mind. I now think it's more like uh, Flaherty and Randy Johnson, where uh, Flaherty was actually poking, poking Randy. He brags yeah. about that all the time. I used to get oh, mad. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, you know, Ben Ben handled it well. It was handled fun. It well. Yeah, Ben did handle it well. Yeah, because yeah. I don't think I. <laughs> there's a couple times it was like Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy, I think. Yeah, but part of that is Garrett <laughs> respects him, so right. you know that's that's part of it too. Any silly. Uh, this isn't on our docket at all. You got any silly Garrett Cole offseason stuff? I I feel like you I think that you see him at the baseball writer thing and uh-huh. I don't know, is Cy Young Garrett Cole? Is there a little uh a little less of, Garrett no, Cole Garrett's, won me over so much the past couple obviously as a baseball player, but as the person, yeah. like the post game guy, the collective buy in guy, like yeah, he's, he's hysterical. Yeah, he he's uh man, he's 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 the total package. Like, what I love about him is he's just so invested in everything and um, his his teammates. And, and he works on all the things outside of pitching, 
being a better teammate, being more knowledgeable about certain things, working on being a better friend. Like, he's just – he's obsessed with all of that, and he's so detailed in everything that he does, um, you know, and he's what – what a season he put together. And the thing I love about him is he's – He's had his moments where, you know, he, he was at a little uh, – at crossroads. At different, it hasn't been just, you know, this smooth sailing, sure. easy ride all the time. There's been moments where, man, he's been up against it and had to make a big start. You're, I remember going into 2022, there were, uh, the playoffs, there are a lot of people that maybe thought he shouldn't be pitching the first game of the, of the playoffs, and he went out and answered that. So there were a lot of moments of truth in his Yankee career that he's met head on and answered and capped it with a, with a, with a Cy Young award last year. I just have so much respect for his journey with us so far and looking forward to seeing the rest of it. All right. You want to pick a question out of a ball? Some people wrote in questions. I think that just looks like a name. It's their names names for them to come up and ask a question. This one's just a question. (laughs) It is. Otherwise a real weird name. I feel like you planted that. No. No? Well, who do you got? I got John Dwayne. Oh. John Dwayne? Does he have a fast track to the mic? Yeah. <laughs> Make a hole. <laughs> yeah. on, on the mic, we'll hear it? I think so, yeah. All right. I think there's a mic. Yeah, a mic over there. Yeah, and there's hats over there. Yeah, well, while he's making his way. We got hats. Let's go, JD. Yeah, yeah. How are you? Hope good, he's got good. Thanks for being with you. us. So, uh, this is going to be terribly dickish for the first question, but... Wow, <laughs> nice. The, uh, the, the 96 Yanks had a, a saying that was, we play today, we win today, that's it. And it feels like uh, over the last few years, we don't bring that same intensity. And I think that uh, when we predetermine that guys are going to have days off, I think that puts us in a position where we're going to try hard to win every day, but if it means going to a certain person, we're not going to do it. Um, Joe Torre pitched Scott Proctor 83 times and we won world championships. I would like to see a little bit more of that intensity. doesn't sound like you're going to get away from that, but that's a thought and a question at the same time. Um, Welcome to the Yankee season. (laughs) (laughs) I think he means when relievers are down, they say these days. Right? Like a reliever will be down for a day? Um, I don't know. I think think we have a – I think we have a killer mentality. Um, You know, we're – in today's game with with how these guys throw like 80 an 80 game reliever is just i don't think it's feasible and at the end of the day we need to go into the postseason too with clay holmes jonathan luizaga whatever you're you know like at their best too and i think in 2024 like 83 games if you can find me that guy that's throwing 75 games, I don't even think you see that. So you're trying to – I mean, you're trying to win the division and and get to the playoffs in a position where you're at strength. And we're going to do that to the best. Now, as far as the killer, I mean, you have that in your mind. I would disagree with you. Well, we got to show you, though. So, tell at the end of the day, we got to show you. You tell them, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> you got anything? Another question? I think, do no. Yeah. All right. We got e, uh, Ian S. Ian S. Make a hole. Aaron Stern. Oh, yeah. This is a little bit of a nicer question. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind. That. Uh, no, nor do I. Yeah. Um, we hear a lot about the role of physicals and medical records in signing free agents and greenlighting trades and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder about with the unique nature of, of playing in the Bronx and with the expectations of the fans, kind of what role, if any, does like the mental conditioning staff and right. sports psychologists play in making additions to the team and making sure it'll be a good fit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would say we do as much due diligence as you possibly can. It's obviously a very inexact science. Um, and like anytime you're signing a free agent or 
about to make a trade. Like you do as much vetting as you, 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 you know, you can't, you're making a trade in the middle of the season. You can't send our mental and actually meet with guys, but you're doing as much behind the scenes homework as you can to at least make it part of the decision making process. And, um, you know, I, obviously playing here can be a challenge and has been for guys at different times. I also think there's sometimes that a, a guy comes here and let's say it doesn't go well. A lot of times we just chalk it up to New York. And, and sometimes it is just, it's baseball. Sometimes it absolutely is New York. So we're, every time we, you know, are, are making a trade, signing a free agent, like, we're making calls behind the scenes to, you know, whether it's guys that have played with them in the past, people we know, trying to get makeup reports and trying to do the best as we can, you know, say, yeah, this is a guy that we could, can thrive here. Or a lot of times there's question marks in certain areas and you got to weigh that and say th that sometimes maybe gets you off a guy or sometimes it maybe is like, okay, we, we feel like we need it, we need to make it work. And so it is – very much a part of it, and we do a lot of digging as much as we we possibly can. Do you think? <clears throat> do you think they did digging on you when they traded traded for you on that? Like, do you? Yeah, do you, do yeah. You, I, think, have you heard I think stories. I or? think that goes back. Um, yeah, I think that goes back. Is you know, it's may look different as time goes by and as you have different resources, yeah. but I think that's that's happened for the history of time. Yeah, even I'm with the minor leaguers in Brian Hoke's book, the Baby Bombers. He, there's sections talking about Cashman talking about um, seeing how the rookies reacted to some moments in their early careers or in their yeah. and and judging their makeup on oh he cool headed like didn't yeah but you know there's also a lot of times you 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 make a judgment sometimes on a guy that oh he can't and they kind of work their way through it and they fight through it um, so it's 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 one of those things that's hard to quantify and hard to figure but we do you know, at least pour a lot into it and try and get to the bottom of things as best we can. Soto and Verdugo seem like two guys that are going to enjoy the atmosphere, at least. Stroman. We think so. We hope so. And we'll find out. And Stroman, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How happy are you to have some lefties? I am. I am. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, so, yeah, I mean. Yes. It's, it's a good answer. I mean, I, I'm a I, – I, you know, you guys know, like, I want balance all the time in the lineup. So, you know, a lot of times over the last few years, if, if we've had three in a lineup, like, it's like, okay, three, six, nine, and kind of space them out. Because it does matter. It does, you know, I always go back to, uh, you know, we played Toronto a couple years ago when they had a really good off on, offense, and they would, you know, and th last year they tried to switch it up, brought some lefties in, brought some, brought a different kind of makeup to their team. But anytime we would play them and it was a tight game, um, you know, and it was now all of a sudden you're late in the game, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth inning, and, and you got Springer, Bichette, Vladdy, you know, those righties coming and you could now go Loisaga, Holmes. It kind of neutralizes their greatness. And when you have some balance that can break some of that up, um, it's really valuable. Yeah, I'm excited about how you how you play some. Yeah, every other. You want to do one more? We got a couple we, minutes. We got yeah. like eight left. Are we not doing the yeah, I guess our teams? Not. Yeah. We'll do. We got people here. We'll take the questions. You want to do that quick? That might be tight. I'm, I think that's tight. tight. Think we're going to make you. We're going to do a draft with you. But oh. instead, we're going to we'll save it for the season. Brendan, how would you say that last name? Vega. Vega. Brendan Vega. BV. Oh, right here. Wow. Wow. He's perfect. Let's go. The efficiency of that pick by yeah. me. Yeah. So, um, uh, you were traded a couple times. Juan Soto got traded here. I was wondering how you would, um, like, how you would uh, mentally prepare to being traded to um, and anywhere, especially New York. Yeah, I mean, so I, I, I got traded to New York. Now, at the deadlines, a, a little bit different, obviously. Um, and I was, I was leaving the only organization I knew. So, I was leaving Cincinnati where – from the time I was drafted, I think I was there nine, ten years, six years in the big leagues, and um, it's that that first time you get traded, it's it's a lot. I mean, forget the baseball part of it. Like, I mean, it's just like, all right, meet us there tomorrow. It's like you're packing up your world and your 
going and you're meeting new people and like, where do I go? Where, where do I go? My pregame routine, where, do I, where am I in batting practice? Like, so where do I live? You know, how do I get my family out? So there's a lot of those kind of things that, you know, you try and, you try and facilitate it as well as you're playing every single day. You know, you're trying to facilitate that as much as you can. Um, some guys handle it really well. Some guys it's a little bit of an adjustment for. I think anytime you, you, you do a winner, now they can have a normal build up and, you know, get settled in in spring training and really get to know guys. So um, it, it's a thing, you know, but like everything, some, some people really thrive on that. And some people, it's more of an adjustment for. Who was the guy that welcomed you, or did you have a familiar face on that Yankees team that you had played with before, or friendly um, with? You know what? Todd Zeal was was great. Uh, Nick Johnson was great. David Delucci got traded around the same time. He, I think, he came from Arizona at the time, so kind of hung out a little bit. But you know, me, it was going to the American League, so I didn't. And I had only been in the National League. So I knew these guys a little bit, but not all that well. Giambi was great. You know what was great was Clemens. Clemens was such an awesome teammate and so <laughs> fun to play with. Nice. Um, uh, yeah, he was uh, – and, and, and he was that guy that when I was coming over, I'm like, <clears throat> as a position player and as a hitter, I'm like, I'm not going to like this guy. Right. But, you know, and he was awesome. He was, he was a great teammate. Do you want to help us break some news? Any uh, non-roster invitees that, you know, there's always like a surprise. Dietrich's been invited to spring training. <laughs> Any names out there? Uh, I don't think so. Any minor league guys going to be in the big league camp you're excited about spending time with? Uh, yeah, like Chase Hampton is, is you know, going to be over. And um, I am excited about that. Will Warren, I'm excited about that. those guys, that kind of that next wave of pitchers that are, you know, I haven't seen a lot of. I certainly haven't seen in person. And, uh, you know, we think very highly of. Okay. Anything exciting about the new coaching staff? Uh, <clears throat> you guys know how I feel about Mendy. So that's that's a tough loss. But at the same time, I'm super excited now for for Brad, for Brad Osmus. He is somebody that I've known a long time, played against him in the National League Central when he was in Houston and I was in Cincinnati back when Houston was a National League Central team. We played against each other a ton. Um, you know, like, so a lot of a lot of back and forth and banter over the years. I think he's going to be really valuable for us. Is there like a niche that he takes over, a catching coach or like drills or a section of, you know, that he owns? Um, that will kind of evolve. He'll be – He'll be very involved in the base running, as a lot of us will be. Um, but we'll let that kind of play itself out. I want him to be, uh, you know, because he's not known yet by a lot of our guys, the biggest thing in spring training is I want him to be kind of front-facing. So he'll, I'll have him run a lot of our staff meetings, but also be in front of our players a lot. And he'll be, you know, kind of an extension of me. But I would say initially probably a lot of the base running stuff he'll be okay. involved with along with Chappie and uh, Matt Tallarico, who's, who kind of roves for us. So, um, but, but we'll let that kind of evolve. He's already been, you know, really involved in, in you know, kind of inputting into spring training and working with Tanner Swanson, who's doing a lot of the administrative stuff so that spring training is it's one of those things you want to make sure it's, you know, you're, you're, really buttoned up going into it. And that's one area where Mendy, you know, he kind of ran spring training and we want to make sure we hit the ground. Topper than that. Mendy. Topper you're than Mendy. You're losing yep. all your spring training generals. Yeah, no doubt. Right. I think Don't let Rizzo by Osmus station to station. I think we got yeah. time for one more question, and it's brought to you by Big League Chew. You guys all yeah. know and love Big League Chew. Who doesn't? I'm going to throw a couple in the crowd. Guard, guard your faces. Oh wow! Big, oh, I hit, I hit you. I'm sorry. Big league Chew. You guys know them. They're the best. Like I, I think since the day you start doing little league, you find Big League Chew and you roll with it. They're the official, they are the official gum of USA Baseball. Boom! Wow. We won. We did it. Uh, and we're giving away a huge swag pack of Big League Chew. And if you head to the Talking Yanks Instagram tomorrow for details for how to enter and win. Keep an eye out for new and improved Big League Chew pouches at your local sporting goods store or Amazon and enter the Big League Chew giveaway on Talking Yanks Instagram. Thank you, Big League Chew, for putting on tonight's event. I mean, 
I, I don't think I've ever met a human that doesn't like Big League Chew. My Aunt Carol. She didn't like gum at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. So, it's part of your childhood, though. Man. Yeah. Big League I chew. love Big League Chew. You got one more question? Should we reach in for one? Uh, what was your favorite question we asked today? Wow. <laughs> a question about a question. Yeah, I hope it doesn't get chopped up. Like, we made the play. Like, that wasn't what I was saying. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. No. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah, yeah. That okay. was... Chop it up. The delivery there kind of left us all on the edge of our seats for a second. <laughs> yeah. like, just being honest. Yeah. Just being real. Yeah. Uh, that was a gas. It was a collective gas. <laughs> I know. I was like, no. Like, I was just saying, that isn't the... Anyway. Anyway. I think we got it. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Now, the bullpen is the only thing we didn't talk about. So, yeah. briefly, I know they just added another lefty today. They uh, got, um, I am blanking on his name. Matt Gage. Gage. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Do you have a pecking order? Do you have confidence? Like, the top three are guys that obviously are awesome, but yeah. also haven't pitched full seasons in a couple of years, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, who do you have as the top three? Uh, J Lo. Yeah. And Holmes. Holmes, obviously, and Canely. Canely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm Would really, you agree with the top three? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm excited what you know Ian Hamilton's gonna gonna do. Um, Efros. Uh, obviously, he was huge for us last year. Efros will Efros will be a little behind though, um, and. Oh, who else? Yo Gogan in the mix. You know what? <laughs> no, but that's one of the <laughs> exciting Gonzalez. things. Hopefully we do have a guy or two that you're not right. necessarily thinking of that does emerge and becomes an important part of the bullpen. Ron, I feel like, is in a much better place physically than he was last year. Just kind of, you know, the shin stuff that he had to deal with off and on. And uh, I feel like physically he's in a good spot. We're excited about a lot of the pieces that can – hopefully impact us and you know hopefully there's another mover or, or or so to make that'll you know fortify that pen a little bit there you go this is what fangrass have it as well, Holmes, yeah we brought Wise victor gonzalez in who we're excited about um Wandy. yes <laughs> wandy's out there and man wandy's been amazing for us mets Gosh. are trying to take him we'll see the mets know, just I, take everyone that I, was just on the Yankees. i, I don't know I, I don't know what's going to happen don't there so we'll stop. see um, don't want to give up your apartment we'll sign you uh, That's the pitch from the match. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Wandy's been a gr- really good Yankee, man. Yes. Yeah. And a clubhouse yeah, personality. He's, he's awesome. He's he's such a he's such a stud. You agree with what they have at the bench here? You know, is this the same as your lineups? We're looking at the FanGraphs roster resource I'm page. I'm 50 now. My eyes are going on me. So. Okay. But look at this. Righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, righty, lefty. It's beautiful. Nice. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees. It's my grandma. Where? Did you just hear? (laughs) Go Yankees. Oh, (laughs) sir.